Let me start by thanking you for joining us in Animo Cyberspace and for all those who made this university celebration possible in this time of pandemic. Although apart, we are still united in mind, heart, and spirit, kahit na online. Christmas 2020 is like no other Christmas as far as I know. In fact, no one can deny that the year 2020 is unlike any year we have experienced. How do we enter into the spirit of Christmas? How do we prepare our minds and hearts to sincerely welcome Jesus? Advent is the period of spiritual and religious waiting. We await the day when we again remember and celebrate the coming of the Christ child, our Savior and Redeemer. This waiting is made more eager and inspiring by a spirit of sacrifice, as well as preparing gifts, exchanging cards and greetings. We also put up lanterns, lights, and figures in our homes, our villages and cities. Here in the Taft community, we put up a Christmas village. Unfortunately, because of the pandemic, not too many can come up to see it. But the sacred scriptures also remind us of another aspect of Advent, waiting for Jesus, Jesus as Christ, as our Lord and Redeemer, who entrusted us with talents and gifts. And this Lord will return. And we, as stewards of those blessings, will be asked to render an account. Advent challenges us to come before the Christ child with humble hearts. Humble because only then can we realize we are beloved and trusted stewards. Humble so we can acknowledge how much we have received from the Lord. Our personal talents, gifts, as well as the joys and achievements of members of our family and even our school. Or when we look back at the challenges and difficulties of COVID-19, many of us may realize how much we have been spared from the pain and grief this pandemic has caused, physically, psychologically, financially, to individuals and to families. Advent invites us to see our lives in a spirit of humility, rather than be tempted to consider what we have as ours from a sense of privilege or entitlement. Unfortunately, that temptation to consider where or who we are what we can do or have done, or what we have as purely our achievement. We can also consider them ours and feel a sense of self-sufficiency. The Church invites us this Advent to examine ourselves as faithful stewards to whom the Lord has entrusted gifts according to our abilities. And the humble acceptance of the many, many gifts we have received will also lead us to a more challenging question. How have I used these gifts as a faithful steward? When the Lord comes, we must be ready. We must expect Him to ask ask questions. To what extent have I shared my talents? How have others benefited from the good things 
abilities, time, treasure, or other gifts placed in my safekeeping? Did I consider myself a steward or owner of these gifts? How were these gifts destined to be shared with others? Certainly, these are questions not only for you, for me, but for us also as community, as a university. May we all realize in humility and gratitude that we have been gifted with much. And may we, during this time of Advent, Christmas, and the months of the year 2021, give joyful thanks for all that the Lord has gifted us. And also to resolve to be loyal stewards by placing our talents and gifts at the service of others. May the Lord, when He returns, find us joyful, good and trusted servants, eager to render an account, to humbly report how our talents have multiplied because we place them at the service of those entrusted to our care, especially the lost, the least, and the last. A meaningful Advent and joyful Christmas and New Year to us all. Live Jesus in our hearts forever. Let us all pause for a while to pray the angel. Let us remember that we are in the most holy presence of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she was by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and to our death. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be done to me according to your word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in our of our destiny. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Be the of the of Christ. Let us pray. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, now and ever shall be, world without end. Our Lethalian prayer. I will continue, O oh my God, to do all my actions for the love of you. Saint and Baptist de Lethal, pray for us. Save Jesus in our hearts forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Welcome to this Eucharistic celebration. Our sponsor for this Mass is the 1911 Brothers Community. And our Mass celebrant is Father Luis Felipe Villalobos of the Legionaries of Christ, 
with Concelebrant Father Luis Lorenzo, LC. Please stand, let us begin the celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Magandang gabi sa inyong lahat, and welcome to the celebration of the Eucharist, last day of the Simbang Gabi. Let's put all our intentions on the altar of this celebration, Eucharistic celebration, especially our school our teachers, our faculty members, and all our dreams moving forward, waiting for Jesus Christ, dwelling in our hearts, dwelling in our societies. May the Lord help us and guide us through this time with his peace. And now my dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, God to you, and my, to brothers, you my brothers and sisters, and sisters that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
let us pray. Come quickly, we pray, Lord Jesus, and do not delay, that those who trust in your compassion may find solace and relief in your coming, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, here I am living in a house of cedar while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. And I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old since the time I first appointed judges over my people, Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, let our response be, Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The favors of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. Forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. He shall say of me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him, and my covenant with him stands firm. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Radiant dawn, splendor of eternal light, son of justice, come and shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. 
Zechariah, his father, filled with the Holy Spirit, prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hand of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, my dear brothers and sisters. Today, the evangelist describes a prophetic hymn, a beautiful hymn, actually, inspired by the Holy Spirit. It is a prophetic interpretation of history to rediscover of the intimate, I would say, the profound meaning of all human events that are always guided by the action and hand of God through many, many men and women in the Bible. And it culminates with a beautiful line. Let's read again. The day shall down upon us from on high. Indeed, the original Greek used for rising sun, Anatole. And this word itself means both light, the light of the sun that shines upon our planet, our world, and at the same time, it means a new shoot that sprouts. And of course, both apply perfectly to our Lord Jesus Christ. Because with Christ appears the light that enlightens every creature and that makes life as well flourish as John the Evangelist says, combining the two realities in him was life, and the life was the light of men. So we can say, in Jesus Christ, we find perfectly both realities, light and life. Let's talk about light. Isaiah reminds us, speaking of the Emmanuel, that the people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. There is a deep darkness in our society. And when I say there is a deep darkness in our society, I'm referring to the darkness of indifference. And this is the deepest darkness because our hearts, our conscience, have become indifferent to the needs of our brothers and sisters less fortunate. Our brothers and sisters that need the essential in life. 
our brothers and sisters that are marginalized. Yesterday, I was driving along Chino Rojas, and I saw this lane walking. It was really hot, so my in Italaga. Trying to drag his own black bag full of bottles of plastic. I suppose that's one of his jobs or one of the ways to survive. And while I was driving in the middle of the traffic, of course, of course, going really slow, and seeing how too many cars were just passing by, I asked myself, why we don't stop? Why we don't say, Ankuya, Sampu Punta? Maybe because we are still in the, this kind of darkness of the, our indifference. Sana Jesus will be the light to get out from that darkness. But moving forward, we found Jesus. We find Jesus as life. And again, I said the prophet remind us, speaking of the Manuel from the house of David a shoot upon which the spirit of the Lord was to rest. Maybe most of you will agree that our society is, all, is also sick. And the confinement because of COVID maybe have opened our eyes to see clearly to this reality. Our body is weak because our pride and because our egoism. We are damaging the body of Christ. And again, the body of Christ, which is our brothers and sisters, the less fortunate, those that are forgotten by this silence of pride and egoism. I love Father Luis Lorenzo's example a couple of weeks ago, talking about how from the very beginning of this pandemic, the only thing that the society has been talking about is when is the vaccine going to be ready? And the whole society is putting the trust financially, culturally, socially on a little tiny vaccine. And I would say, Sana, our society, will wish with the same ardor the only vaccine that can give life and light to our lives. Yes, my big brothers and sisters, I'm talking about baby Jesus, the Emmanuel. Let's put this prayer on the hands of our dear mother, the Blessed Mother, Mama Mary, trusting that she is going to be the one guiding us to meet her son, our life, her son, our life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Prayers of the faithful. The Almighty Father is faithful to his promise. With confidence, we present to him our needs as we pray, Lord, be gracious to us. Lord, be gracious to us. Banish from our hearts fear, hatred, anxiety, and attachment to sin, we pray. 
Lord, be gracious to us. Give strength to the wavering, comfort to the troubled, and joy to all, we pray. Lord, be gracious to us. Give light, wisdom, and strength to our religious and political leaders, we pray. Lord, be gracious to us. Rescue those unjustly deprived of liberty and those marginalized and abandoned by society, we pray. Lord, be gracious to us. Together and by association, give the De La Salle brothers and their partners in the mission the gift of fortitude to adapt to the challenging needs of the times, especially in providing human and Christian education to the last, the lost, and the least, we pray. Lord, be gracious to us. Grant to the souls of our brothers and sisters the reward of eternal life, we pray. Lord, be gracious to us. Faithful God, help us to be strong and patient in our difficulties. May we never lose hope in your promise. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously make your own, O Lord, the offerings which we bring, that partaking of them, we be cleansed of our sins and merit to stand ready with pure hearts for the coming in glory of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him. We love beyond all telling John the Baptist, son of his coming, and proclaim his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
you are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. May holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down the Spirit upon them by the Lord, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, then entered willingly into his passion, he took breath, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and was more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for men, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. This is the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and my Lord, Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and for by divine teaching, we dare to say.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who saith to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant to us who find new vigor, O oh Lord, in these your wondrous gifts, that as we prepare to celebrate in adoration the festivities of your son's nativity, so may we possess in gladness his everlasting rewards, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us now pray the Horatio Imperata for deliverance against the COVID-19. God, our Father, we come to you in our need to ask for protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. Grant all this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick. Pray for us. Saint Raphael, the Archangel. Pray for us. San Roque. Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. San Pedro Calonsot. Pray, Pray for us. Some announcements. We thank the Dallasal brothers for sponsoring our mass tonight. Thank you, brothers. We also thank all our sponsors for the Sambanga B masses. Our Christmas Eve mass will be streamed live from the Manila Cathedral tomorrow, December 24 at 8 p.m. Please stay tuned after the final song, for the Christmas carol performed by the De La Sol Choral under the guidance of their artistic director, Mr. Joel Aquino. The Christmas message of the brother president, Brother Raimundo Soplido, FSC, will also be premiering on a separate video after the Mass. Thank you. We'd like to thank as well everyone who made our Simbanga be possible 2020. Thank you to the Lasallian Pastoral Office. Thank you to our tech team. Thank you to our student volunteers and readers. Um, I'd also like to thank Father Luis Felipe. To my right, Father is a graduate student at the La Salle as well. So he's very kind to uh, um, celebrate this Mass for all of us tonight. Wishing you all a Merry, Merry Christmas and a grace-filled New Year 2021. Malagayang Pasko po sa ating lahat. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's uh, advent 
and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in joyful, in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our Lasallian prayer. I will continue, O oh my God, to do all my actions for the love of you. St. John Baptist de La Salle. Pray, Pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts. Forever. forever. Halina Jesus sa aming piling, manaog sa lupa kami ay halipin. Puso namin ay papagalapin ng pag-ibig na di magmamalik. Jesus sa lina, kaming pag-asa ka, abuhin mo kami. Pasko, pasko, pasko na naman ulit 
Tanging araw nating pinakaminiki Pasko, Pasko, Pasko na naman muli ang pag-ibig na hahari Pasko, Pasko, maligayang Pasko